these right here, so. What are we talking Whoa. about? He cold popped it. Okay. Try to get up. Yeah. Welcome to the Bogey Boys podcast. You're joined here by Kevin and Mark as always. And we've got a very special guest, Mr. Charlie Hall. How's, it, how's everything going, Charlie? You okay? Yeah, good, thank you. Apart from this lockdown, but I'm, I'm coping. I know, yeah, aren't we all? <laughs> well, uh, without the lockdown, you probably wouldn't be speaking to us, so it's probably a good thing for you. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> How are you finding things with the whole lockdown, Charlie? I hate it. I'm yeah. I'm very active person. I like doing everything and it's just really get me down. I miss playing golf with all my friends and that. Um I just miss playing golf with them. Yeah, bet you do, yeah. Yeah. So the, as I say, thanks for coming on and taking the time to speak to us. The the purpose of our podcast shows is just to try and inspire the next generation. Obviously, your career it speaks for itself. Um su- successful career as an amateur and a professional. Uh, so we just want to try and give a bit of insight to to your journey, your career, uh, how it all started. Uh, where you are now and obviously what your plans are for the future. So, um, yeah, that's that's where we're going to go with the podcast. Yeah, no worries. At any random time, I could just jump in with a mad question, so be prepared for that as well. <laughs> that's good. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, so obviously we just start then back in, back when you started. We can see that you started at the age of two. Yeah, I did. I first thing I got up when I was two years old and then just kind of loved it from then. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. So, what was that? Yeah. What was that? I suppose, obviously, the first question is then what was the what was the what was the benefits of starting at that age when you got to like the nine, ten, elevens when you were competing in 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 the well, top? Yeah. Well, most people start at like seven, well, to yeah. nine years old. So by the time I was that age, I was been playing for seven years. Um, but I just loved it, and I loved being I loved playing with the boys growing up. You know, uh, that was really competitive. They hit they hit it really hard, and I just loved it. Um, but it definitely gave me a bit of an advantage as well because. The younger you start, the more you, you're like very, once you're nine years old, you're mature for your age, as in like the golf and where you learn different shots, you have different feels. And it's really good because it learns you like respect on and off the golf course as well because of the etiquette and that. Yeah, um, yeah. So, and I think that's really good. Yeah, well, I found that playing golf. I obviously, I didn't start nowhere near as young as you, but I started yeah. in my early teens and I found growing up, yeah, it does teach you that respect, doesn't it? It does, oh, yeah. Because I, I had, I have got a good friend and he was a bit of a wild child and then he started golf when he was like 10 or 11 years old and it really like quite quieted him down, you know, even at school and that. So, yeah, it's good for stuff like that. Yeah. So, speaking about school here, Charlie, we, like, obviously we can we read all your stuff. So, it says that you went and dropped out at 13 to be homeschooled. Was that? Yeah, golf? I think I was. Yeah, I was 12 or 13, but I never ended up doing any homeschooling. I just kind of... <laughs> so that, was that all golf-related, was it? Yeah, I just then I got to do math, English and science. And I'm not very good at spelling and I'm not very good at counting. You don't have to be to golf. You just got to keep yeah. it low. Um, but I like science. I find it interesting, but I never done my GCSEs. I just turn pro and play golf. Yeah, it, dep- it depends if you're counting our scores. If you're counting our scores, you need to be good at maths. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you mentioned they're growing up with the boys. Then is that was that was there not many uh, girls playing at the golf club then, or did you just no? I was with the I was the only girl. Yeah, I was the, I was the only girl, and yeah. I kind of liked it because uh, amongst the boys, like growing up, and it was just it was fun because you, it was more competitive, and you had to hit it harder to keep up with them. You know, to keep keep on hitting the same distances as, as them, and it was it was really good. I loved it. We had so much fun. The and junior like, days were the best days. Yeah, they are. Yeah, you always go back. It was upsetting when I become eighteen years old because I couldn't get junior diet cokes and chi- uh, chicken burgers for like one pound fifty. <laughs> <laughs> you had to pay the full price then. Yeah, the full price. Yeah. <laughs> when you say in there that it made you hit it harder, was that your yeah. philosophy growing up? Was it that? Was that was? The yeah, thing? like my coach at the time, Kevin Theobald, he first taught me from when I was younger, and he was to, he he was old school and he was like, hit it hard as you can because the harder you hit it when you're younger, you can always tone it down when you get older yeah. if you hit it like a fairy when you're younger it's kind of harder to hit it harder when you're older because you'll hit it more offline yeah. you hit it harder when you're younger you can tighten the line up if you know what I mean yeah so then talk us through your, your amateur career then because I've seen there obviously you're playing in a pro I'm at, t- at the age of 10 with uh, Morgan Pressler yeah and, Morgan Pressler what, yeah what, what were those experiences like at such a young age yeah it was great I actually shot five over that day um, yeah. in the pro-am Amazing. and I think that's pretty wow. good round that was round Royal Livingston and Anne's and I remember I just remember like holding a putt and I had quite a few people following me like in the crowd on the prime day and she was like tilt your cap to say like thank you and I just was like this I was like real short little I was a small kid growing up small and petite and I was quite cute like I was just like tilting my cap hitting the ball hard it was quite funny amazing 
Well, yeah. I didn't have to do that at 10 years old. I don't think I even knew what golf was when I was 10. No. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. Because you, not, it's not very appealing for young girls. Well, back then it wasn't. I think like Instagram and loads of like the rules are changing and everything, you know, with the like the, the golfing dress code and that's changed and makes it more appealing for younger the younger generation. Yeah. But um, yeah. Just that we knew you said you got you uh, picked up a golf club at two in the future. Like if you plan to have any children, that would you be getting them doing the same route, like at two at two, giving them a golf club and stuff? Yeah, I'll give them a golf club or if I was a boy, getting them into boxing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like boxing? Yeah. Yeah, is that one of your other passions, but, is it? Yeah, I love boxing. Yeah. I'm actually doing some boxing tonight um, with my friend who I live in the house with. So I love boxing. I love it. Yeah. And a- I like I like watching tennis as well. Yeah. Well, tennis is similar to golf when you think like the same characteristics. It's an yeah, a lot, a lot of tennis players play golf and a lot of golfers play tennis. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So yeah. Move, moving on with, into your amateur career then, obviously, then as, as, you, as, you've, as you're progressing, you, you turn pro at the, at the age of 16. So in between the age of 10, when you're playing in the pro arms of 16, uh, yeah. at, at what point did you think, do you know what, I want to do this for the rest of my life? This is, this is what I want to be a professional golfer, or was it before I, then? I kind of, yeah, I was like eight years old. I thought I want to be a professional golfer. Oh, wow. But I didn't think I want to be a professional golfer. I knew I wanted to be a professional golfer, okay. and I knew I was going to be a professional golfer. So it, I didn't really think about it if you know what I mean it just yeah yeah it was always always something that I wanted to be yeah amazing and then so what what, 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 sorry go on no I was and I remember the first uh I was 16 when I turned pro and my first round that I played as a professional was on New Year's Day and it was 2013 and just me and my friends went out it was me Dan Ashcroft James Northern and I think it was Jamie Ashcroft and the first hole I birded and then Dan was like oh my god so what does it feel like to be a professional now like to bird your first hole. I said, I said, Dan, yesterday I was an amateur and it feels exactly the same as the day before. I'm not playing in an event. I'm just playing with you. It was so funny. But That's yeah. a good attitude to have though, isn't it? As, as I say, yeah. you're, you're not taken by those pressures of, oh my God, I'm a professional. I'm in a, I'm in a completely different pond. Obviously yeah. people, I don't know what the professional ranks is like, but is yeah, it, is... It, it? It was quite annoying because the year, year before I played in a major and I came like 29th or 30th. And then I came second in a pro event and then fifth in another pro event. And I was looking down, I was thinking, I could be taking the money. So what's the point of me playing in these, in these pro events and as an amateur winning all this money and not take, and I can't be able to take it? So yeah. I thought, you know what, I'm going to turn pro. And I did. And then um, before my first pro event as a professional, it was in Morocco on the Ladies European Tour. I went shopping with my mum and I, I used to like mulberry handbags at the time. And there was this mulberry handbag in there. And I said, mum, I really want to get this handbag. And it was about two and a half grand. And she goes, Charlie... There's no way you're gonna have that for ages because you've got to save up. I said, Mum, I'm gonna play my first pro event next week as a professional and I'm gonna win some money, I'm gonna buy it straight away. I ended up coming second in the event and bought it straight away. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's an amazing story. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you mentioned there about your progression moving into the professional. You played uh, the 2012 Curtis Cup, one with GB and Ireland, and then yeah. you mentioned there the 2012 Open Championship and you finished. So was that just you got and uh, you got to world number three, I believe, as an amateur? Obviously, taking yeah. those into consideration, is that would you just thinking in your head that's the na- next natural progression for me then I've done all the cameras yeah amateur. yeah definitely I didn't I'm, I'm not a big fan of the college circuit when they go to uni in America I just think there's no better like apprenticeship as turning pro young and then playing against the best because I just think I, I think that's a good way but someone want a degree and everything which I, which is completely good but in my situation I couldn't do that <laughs> So when you've turned pro there, did you have any sort of sponsorship or backing? Because as we've heard in the professional route, it all seems to be down to, to money. That's like every single person we spoke to. Um, yeah, the first year I didn't sign with anyone. I don't want to sign with anyone. I just wanted to go out there and prove myself. I had two, uh, I had five, no, six second place finishes on the trot. Yeah, my yeah. first year on tour. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then at the, end of the, and at the end of that year, that's when we started signing some contracts and stuff. I was gonna say, yeah, it's it's not a, it's it's it, that's a that's a good way to arrive on the scene. Yeah. That five second exactly. place finishes, then you had so many top tens, and then you got rookie of the year, didn't you? Yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. I did. And then off the back of that, you also played in the Solheim Cup. So speak to us about that, that, that youngest ever player. Yeah, that's mad, that was mad because two years before I was in the Junior Solheim Cup, and I and that year I could have still played in the Junior Solheim Cup because I was young enough, and oh, I was in the actual wow. Solheim Cup. But you know, the one thing I remember about that week is peanut butter and jam sandwiches. Oh, lovely. Yeah, it was, I've never had them before. And like, I had, I think it was Annika. She was one of the captains, like the vice captains. And she kept bringing these peanut butter and jam sandwiches out to me on the golf course. And I, 
probably ate about 20 of them around like the little <laughs> they, kept, they kept them up in little bot in little spare for me yeah. I just remember eating them I, I've never had peanut butter before I went to America then and yeah I fell in love with peanut butter well that, that was my the- highlight of my 2013 Psalm Cup <laughs> <laughs> well it must it must it must have bowled well for you because obviously in your singles match you beat a, a certain Paula Creamer didn't you yeah was it obviously yeah. growing up was she seen as one of your idols was she yeah yeah she yeah she was the Pink Panther um, yeah. and I get on with Paula now she's a really nice girl and she's done some great things for the game yeah of course um, but yeah my, my friend had a crush on her so after I beat her I he asked me to get a, a, a autograph. So as soon as I beat her, I said, can you can you get my, my friend's autograph? And she signed the ball that I beat her on, bless her. Oh, that's I wouldn't amazing. have the balls to do that now. I just, when I was younger, I didn't think. I just thought, ah, oh, you know what? I'm going to get you to <laughs> yeah. sign this ball for my friend. And that's probably the only autograph I've ever asked anyone to sign. And it wasn't even for myself. Yeah. It was for James. And what was it What was it like being in that whole setup? Then obviously you got the peanut butter and, and, and jam sandwich, yeah. and the jelly sandwich, as they call it in America. Uh, what, was, yeah. what, was the whole, what was the whole experience like? I, that- yeah, it was so good. I, I remember I never had an eye before I went playing that song cup and then each night we got given like amazing gifts and like some nights we got given like champagne and everything but I was too young to have the champagne like yeah. in these big gift things and then one night we got an iPad with our, with our name engraved on the back of it and I just thought I want to play in the next one so I can get another iPad. <laughs> <laughs> and you did yeah four in a row and still going yeah. Yeah yeah. Amazing stuff. So then talk, talk to us about your, your, your professional career, because I say the, the whole point of these episodes that we're doing, we're calling yeah. it the professional route. And it's just to try and understand um, the highs and lows as being a professional. Obviously, you've got off to a flying start and then yeah. you didn't have to wait too long after that for your first win on the on the European tour, just, just before your 18th birthday, wasn't it? A nice present talk yeah. to us about that first win. Yeah, it was good. Um, yeah, that was in Morocco. So the previous year I came second and then the year after I won it. But I shot nine under in the last round. Um, I just played really well and I didn't really not then I had to get in the playoff and um, I had like 182 yards into the wind over the water to a back right pin hit a forearm to like two feet and then wow. bird it and won the playoff oh, wow. it's nice to hear you actually mentioning some golf when you're talking and not just not just about the food that you get given I know yeah yeah <laughs> I remember that night and then it was uh, and then after that that night it was Amy Bolden and Kelsey McDonald I was good friends with them at the time still am they're good girls and they said, um, come on then to my dad. Oh, we'll take Charlie out for some nice food and that. We'll look after her um, and celebrate her win. He was like, okay, I'll trust you girls, rah, rah, rah. They took me out and I ended up having a drink. I was, I was, only, it was a week before my 18th birthday. Um, I got really drunk, ended up dancing on, I think dancing on the bar and then cutting my foot, being sick. And then they took me back to my dad's. And my dad was like, thanks for looking after her. <laughs> well, that's time he trusts them, then I imagine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's in style. Oh, you've got to celebrate the you've victories, got it, haven't you've you? You've got to celebrate yeah. the victories, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So then obviously progressing from there, you, that, that year also, another amazing year, you won the Order of Merit. So uh, yeah. what was what was that like? Obviously just Yeah, that was really, well. yeah, it was really, really good. Um, it was in Dubai. The final was in Dubai. And uh, yeah, it came fourth in like the tournament. Um and then that was good enough for me to win the Order of Merit. But yeah, it was just, I didn't really think about it really going into that week. I just played good and won it. Yeah. So uh, just that transition there, then that's your first two years as a professional. Yeah. What, what, what advice would you give to obviously young girls and, and women who were, who, were, who were looking to make that transition? What would you say? I know you just mentioned there about just go for it because you want to compete. Yeah, I think yeah. you've got to think, right, at the end of the day. Um, it's all in your, your hands, you know. You want to go out there and, and win events well what's going to win you them events you've got to i'd say chipping and putting is the main thing well driving and putting driving and putting i think if you hit it straight you're gonna hit greens and you've got a whole putts yeah so so then they're the two things i think you'd work on yeah. i'm quite a good iron player but then as well you just got to go out there hit it find it and hit it again you're not going to dive you hit bad shot you know you want to be you want to be annoyed after a bad round because that means you care but don't let the previous shot affect the next shot because you can't do nothing about the, the previous shot do you know what i mean yeah, it's probably something I need to learn as well, to be fair. Yeah. yeah. That's because he can't find his previous shot. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, that is the, that is the problem sometimes. Yeah. So <laughs> then, obviously, you, you, you've made that transition then onto the, you've split 2015 yeah. between the, the LET and the LPGA Tour. Yeah. Um, so talk us through that. I'm, I'm mostly, I mostly played on LPGA because I played well in my first few events. I came seventh in my first LPGA event in, um, where was it? In, in Australia and then that got me into a lot more in America and I got in all the majors as well so that was nice yeah amazing stuff and then what was the, what was the reason for staying out in, in the LPJ and not not the LET was it it's just a better field out there like LET is good for starting up and everything 
if um and the money's bigger in america it's the place to be yeah definitely definitely we were going to mention that about about the uh, the money and stuff because you, you know just the, yeah the, the, the gap between the men's and the women's like the, how do you feel about that obviously it's men's have got more coverage and different things but the women's game is growing and obviously the money yeah the women, yeah well at the end of the day the, yeah the women's game is growing but I can understand why there's not as much money in the women's game because more people watch the men's game. So more people watching the men's game and more coverage leads to more sponsorship. So I totally understand it, but I think we're going in the right direction, yeah, um, yeah, especially on the LPJ tour. Yeah. I think our money is just, I think our money is more than their men's European tour now. So yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Stuff. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. stuff. Yeah. Okay, so then it, we obviously just going back a touch there to the um to the Solheim Cup. We said you've mentioned um just talk us through that that 2019 experience. What a what a, yeah. what a way to what a way to end it. With, with, yeah, that was uh, fantastic. Was it really was. I was gonna pull out though, like the day before I flew up there because I was really poorly the week before in hospital with like a bad food poisoning like on my stomach. I was really poorly, but I didn't I done well to actually even play that week. I felt so drained and so tired. It was amazing, you know, winning in front of the home crowd and everything and Suzanne's putt was fantastic you know um she gives me goosebumps yeah I can imagine yeah because we obviously we've seen this all we all seen the scene on the, on the yeah. top and, and obviously what happened and that's so what was because that, that was you would lost two and we'd lost two in a row hadn't we and then yeah then this was to stop three in a row and yeah it was just the drama and everything so what was, know, the, what, yeah. was, what was the atmosphere and that things like afterwards oh it was amazing home as well yeah like I, I I didn't well we went to the after party and I just remember Mel Reed. She's so funny. She was one of the captains that year. She comes into the team room in this big sumo wrestling outfit. It was like an inflatable outfit, doing a silly dance, drinking a bottle of beer. And it just made it just made me tickle, tickle myself. Like the after party was so funny. The whole team was just being silly. It was all locked in a room, passing around the trophy, just drinking out of it. It was it was great. But at the back of that last room, before Susan hold that putt, everyone we all thought we lost it. People was going home, you know, like in the crowd and that. And then she holds yeah. that put and was turned around and won it. It was crazy, yeah. One of the craziest finishes I've ever seen. It take, takes you back to that miracle in Maidana on the, on the Ryder Cup, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, yeah. No, it was great. I wish yeah. I could dig that last green up, though, at Glen Eagles. <laughs> 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 I was one up going down the last and I lost the last hole, but I'd, I left myself an impossible chip. It was stupid. Yeah. But it is what it is. But well, yeah. Half, I, I, half the point was, was the difference, though, at the end of the day, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was, it was at the end of the day, but... That was good fun. Amazing stuff, amazing stuff. Yeah, so then obviously let's talk majors then. Um, obviously you're still yet to win a major, but is that a, is that a goal? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I feel like I play my best golf in the majors actually. Like I've, I've finished top 10, probably more majors than I have LPJ events, but yeah. I've came second at A&A um, a few years ago. But yeah, definitely a major is my main goal. And I, I feel like I concentrate more in the majors as well. Yeah, and how did how did that feel for you this year? Obviously, with the with the COVID and having to pull out, and obviously, I know uh, it's crazy. Yeah, I, I hate I hated that because that's my favorite. That's the event that I came second in as a major, and I think in the last few years I finished top ten every year. Um, and I just it was horrible. But at least I got COVID out of the way. But it, yeah. I didn't really, I didn't really have a bad COVID experience. I lost my taste and smell for two weeks. That was the most upsetting thing about it because I love the taste of my food. I love the taste of my food. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We'd never have guessed that. <laughs> yeah, I love food. I was sitting in my hotel room and I was like, ah, oh, the one highlight of my day is eating, but I can't taste anything. I could I could probably do with that to be fair, out the taste. <laughs> Eat some more healthy food. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly couldn't do prison. I certainly oh. couldn't go to prison. I was stuck in a hotel room with TV, shower, and a bit of a spacious room, but yeah, it made me realise, because you've got to be... Sh- I couldn't. I seriously couldn't. I've done yeah. it too much. Ten what was days. It, what was, was it? Ten? Was it ten? I was gonna. I've gonna ask that ten then. Days. Was it ten days? Yeah, no golf, no nothing. Just have to sit there. Yeah, just sat there. Mm-hmm. I know, and while well, everyone's doing loads of in room workouts, loads of burpees. I actually got quite fit in my room, to be fair. <laughs> there you go. I remember just ordering loads of food, and just having a bite of everything, see if I could taste anything, and I couldn't taste anything. And I don't like spicy food, but I ended up getting loads of these um like beef jerky sticks and. They were spicy, and I just—they were the only things I could eat just to try and taste something in my mouth. Yeah. So obviously, did you you flew out like and got tested positive at the event? Yeah, like, I felt a bit weird on the Sunday night when I was flying out there, but I thought it was the first nine-hour flight I've been on in like nine months, so maybe it's the jet lag getting to me. And then I landed, and I was very chesty, and I've got asthma. I've got quite bad asthma, and there was a it was the time all the forest fires was was on in California. Oh yeah. 
there's all this smog in the air. So I thought, oh, I've got a bad chest because I've got asthma because of the fires. And the next day I went down to the golf club and I had a temperature. It was, it was like 38.5, which is quite high. Yeah. And they go, yeah, well, it's 120 degrees outside. So you're going to, you probably got a temperature. But I was like, it's half six in the morning. Like, I don't think it would be because of that. And I thought, oh, maybe it's, it is. And then played the golf course, tested. And then the next day was on my like fifth hole and uh, I had COVID. By that time, I was feeling better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah back on the golf course, yeah, where you feel most comfortable. Yeah, but the crazy thing was, I was with mum and dad. The day I was feeling poorly, they didn't catch it. Yeah, it's, yeah, I know. It's weird, yeah. There's, there's plenty of stories like that with my family and with, with Kevin yeah. with as well, where that you, you somebody gets it and because Kevin's had it, yeah. you, you get yeah. it, it doesn't spread to say it. Yeah, the only thing I felt was like the day I had it, if I had to walk 100 yards, it felt like I was walking 50 miles. Like, I felt so achy. Yeah, that's but exactly the same with me. I, I actually slept from 1 o'clock in the afternoon until 7 o'clock the next morning. Yeah. Wow. And my caddy was staying in the same hotel as me. And this is the day after I got diagnosed with COVID. My mum and dad was ringing me and, and I wasn't picking my phone up. So I had to ring reception. Someone come and knock to my door. My caddy did because I thought I was dead in my room. <laughs> but I wasn't. I wasn't. I was just slept for crazy but from one o'clock in the afternoon until seven o'clock the next morning that's a crazy sleep just wiped yeah. you just wiped you and out I, could have, I was angry because they woke me up because i could have slept longer <laughs> i was like Take advantage, yeah. you, let sleep <laughs> definitely yeah, yeah definitely so you know when you were, we were just kind of jumping back what we were you talking about uh, you didn't have a, have a sponsor when you first yeah. and stuff, and then, when you actually come to sign with a sponsor like whoever you're with now like how did you make that decision did you try the clubs and do it or um, no i didn't i didn't want to uh, I didn't want to sign with any golf clubs. I was happy with the golf clubs that I had at the time. So I thought, yeah. I don't want to sign. So I just signed with, I think I signed with a hat deal, Rico. So I got a manager. So hat deal, Real Rico. Amiga, which was a watch sponsor. Lacoste, which was Cloven. And then Taylor, Titleist at the time for my golf shoes, like Footjoy. Yeah. Um, and then Titleist Ball and Glove. And I had quite, I had a few others, but I can't remember what there was. Yeah. But yeah. That was back then. And then over the years, how's that how's that obviously changed and progressed? Have you yeah, it's good to build, a build like a part, part, partnership with someone and that, and I'd let my manager be in control of that. Yeah, and you're part of the TaylorMade group now, which is quite a prestigious yeah. business, isn't it? Obviously, yeah, I love TaylorMade. They are the best clubs, honestly. They're, they're so good. Yeah, I used to use the old blades back in the day. Yeah. yeah. And what you, what, what's in the bag at the moment then? Is it, you've got the Sim 2 and the... Yeah. Yeah, I got them. They're really good. I like the driver. I just can't wait to get out into some hot weather and try it out again. Just try them, yeah. I was out in Dubai, and try, I was out in Dubai trying it. I seen that. Yeah, what was that like? Yeah, it was good. It was just I was just practicing pretty much every day from I was doing early mornings to 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 early afternoons. So I was going playing at like well practicing from like six to like two every day. Yeah, which was nice. Yeah. What made you come back, come back? Or why didn't you stay out there for the for the winter or whatever? And um, my dad was poorly, so I had to fly oh, back and see. Oh, yeah, I hope he's all right. Yeah, yeah he had a, he had an operation, bless him, because he's got he had cancer, uh, so they they had a, got him into private and they took hopefully taking the cancer out touch wood. He had the operation on Tuesday. Yeah, oh, fingers crossed. Yeah. Hope he gets better. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Hope, he's, hope he's okay. Yeah, so obviously we, we spoke there just about the, obviously the, the challenges that 2020 have brought, but it also brings opportunity to some to some to some occasions. And yeah. that's with the with the Rose series as well. Obviously, you went on to yeah. win that. Is that something that you would have played in if it wasn't? Yeah, football? yeah, I wouldn't have, yeah, I wouldn't have played in it if I was in America because obviously I've been in America, but it was fantastic yeah. that Justin and Kate have you know, set something up like that. And the final was at Wentworth and it was great. And it was just such a shame about the fire that happened. Yeah, it I was. was. On the, it wasn't there, ninth tee box when it was happening on, on the and uh, behind the ninth and the tenth. I know. It was crazy. And Annabelle was in front of me and then Annabelle Dimmerk and she lives in Sunnydale. She can go back to her flat at night because I was evacuating the houses there. So wow. it was crazy. I didn't, did they ever get to the, was it just weather that? Like, what was the cause of that? I can't. Someone said apparently it was a cigarette or it was one of the train oh. tracks because the train track goes in between the two golf courses. Oh, okay. And a spark lit and they cough. Wow. Okay. But yeah, another another win to add to the roster though. <laughs> a very yeah. impressive roster at that, yeah. Yeah, no, it was good. It was good. Had my good friend Ryan Evans on the back for me as well. He plays, he's playing the men's European tour um, and he's, he's a good golfer and he's a good guy, but we had a lot of fun. He's, yeah. He's fun. As, so so how, do, how do you split your time then with between the European and the PGA? Do you, do you just stay over there? I haven't, played in, I haven't played in Europe since 2014, oh. uh, really. So I play full-time in America and then play the odd event, you know, 
we have the British Open, the Scottish Open is joint LPJ and LAT. So I guess when I kind of play an event. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but it's a good tour to play on. It's just obviously my commitments with the LPJ. Yeah. Right, so, so, so you actually live in America and then you're based there? No, I fly back and forth. I play three events in America, then I come home for two weeks and then fly back out for three. Oh, wow. Yeah. I can't live in America. I'm too much of a home bird. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say that. Yeah, you just yeah. get back and see all your friends and all that. And that's, yeah. that's, impo that's important to you as part of your of your journey as you, as you continue to go, yeah? Yeah, it is. It really is. Surely you must be getting get sick of airports after all that. Yeah, you do, but the plane becomes your second home. <laughs> yeah, <that's it. laughs> yeah, got your, got yeah. your, got your VIP seats on the plane then when you're coming back. <laughs> yeah, just sleep. I'm, I'm a good sleeper. I take plane, off. I <laughs> that's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's all right for some. Yeah, I can't do that. Me, I, why, why that? To be fair, though, the only time I yeah. get on the plane is when I'm going on some sort of booze and holiday. So I'm probably booze and holiday, <laughs> yeah. drunk. Yeah. <laughs> and they use a couple, couple of hour flights, didn't they? Probably yeah. Spain or somewhere. Yeah. So, what what are the plans? What are the plans for this year then? Um, well, obviously with with COVID and the, mm. the LPJ tours due to start. Is it March? Is it the first event? Is it or the no, end, end of February? End, end of February. Feb. Yeah. 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 So um, planning to go back yeah. over soon. Yeah, I'm gonna go back over and do a bit of practice early, and then and then play. Um, probably stay with my friend Jay Green. She plays on the LPJ tour. She's a lovely girl. Been friends with her since I was 10, 11 years. So. Yeah. We've kind of grew up together and yeah, do a bit of practice and then play them to events. And then I'm going to play in the Sunnydale foursomes. Hopefully it goes ahead. I'm going yeah. and staying, going to play with my friend Ryan Evans. And we love that event. We played in it last year and I hope it goes, goes, goes on. Yeah. So what, I'm not, I'm not familiar with that one. What's that? What's that? Is that just a, a... Sunnydale foursomes? Oh, it's quite an old event. It's a foursomes event. Like it can be two male pros and or two or a male pro and a lady pro or two amateurs it's just a great event. It's so much fun. I love playing golf in that Sunnydale and Wentworth area. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to live down there. In the I'd love to definitely live live down there in the future. Yeah, because obviously commuting in and out of England as well, you're not far from the airport. Of course. When you were saying that you're um, you're going to stay with your friend in America, like where about is that? Where you, where you West Palm Beach. Oh, right, nice. Yeah. Lovely. West Palm, yeah. Not a bad place to live. What, no, what, not too bad. Do you have a course that you're affiliated to or practice over there or do you just bob around? Or... Uh, no, she plays at Trump, so yeah. probably go and play there or I'll, I'll, I'll see. I'll get my manager to send some emails over. And then my caddy lives up in Orlando, so I'm going to go up to Orlando as well for a couple of days and do some work up there. Nice. Yeah, no, definitely. Sounds, yeah, it's good. Sounds good. Oh, yeah. Sounds good. So the um the it's Solheim Cup year again. Um, obviously the 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 season starts. That's going to obviously be another ambition for you this year. So you've got yeah. your ma your majors. You want to aim for the Solheim Cup. Well, lucky actually, because I don't know if this is the first year, but we're going to have Solheim and Ryder within a month. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that, that, that is pretty crazy. It's, it should be good fun though. Yeah, both in America as well. So obviously, yeah. what's the what, what's the um what's the goals for twenty twenty one and and moving forward? Uh, just. The majors, aim for the majors and get a couple of wins and hopefully. Um been working my, my socks off and just I finished good with it end of last season. Um so I hopefully carry on that form and just tidy up on a few things. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well just speaking of just a little question about your game when you go on, what what's your what are your strengths? My iron play. And I'm quite okay. I hit it quite straight and I'm I hit it like I'm above average for my driving. Um but I like my, I'm a good iron player and I'm good at like I like drawing and fading the ball. Yeah, just shape, mm -hmm. shaping your shots. Yeah, yeah. It's important. So obviously you mentioned there before about advice that you give to people um, who were growing up yeah. to to work on the 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 putting and, and the driving and stuff. But obviously when they get to the point where they are at an elite level and they maybe haven't got a management team or they haven't got anybody, what advice would yeah. you give them about making that step step into the, into the into the pro ranks? You you kind of know when you're ready. You know when you're ready. Um, but you know, I didn't think about it. I just thought, you know what, I'm playing in these events and I'm doing well, so I'm going to turn pro. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's a good philosophy yeah. to have. Some people do overthink it, don't they? And that's that's Definitely. after that. Yeah. Is that because it was like second nature? Because obviously you were you were two, and then you were like it was just golf all your life, so it's just yeah. Sort of thing. Yeah, it was just like a second nature. Like I always had it set in my head, so I was always going to do it. Are you done? Yeah. Some stuff, yeah. Any more? Um, now, yeah, one more question I've got for you. We've no got a, um, the Bogey Boys Golf Day coming up. We don't know what month yet, but are you up for playing in it? When we get a yeah, whereabouts, whereabouts would it be? It'd probably be up here, the Form Bureau. Uh, oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's good. Like, um, yeah, I'll definitely play in it. That'd be, yeah, that'd be fun. If I'm not here, I'll, I'll promise you. If I'm here, I'll promise you I'll come and play in it. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. if not, we get Anthony to hassle you to yeah. get until you turn up. <laughs> yeah, I was saying, get Anthony to come up and, and we'll play. Yeah, we'll definitely play. Yeah. No, and again, look, appreciate you taking the time to speak to no us. No worries. Thank no, you. And sorry, you. sorry it took so long to get in. I'm useless with replying and different no, people's no, really. accounts. But yeah, no, no thank listen, you. Listen, like, you're, you're a top level. When I first messaged you, right, I messaged like a message to a few people. And yeah. Mark's going, that's so funny that you've messaged Charlie Hull there. He's like, that's like messaging Rory McElroy and asking him, asking him to come on. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then the same day, randomly out the blue, and he said, I actually know Charlie Hull personally to ask him. I was like, are you messing up? Just been talking about it just then. <laughs> so it was always that's really funny. to get together. Yeah. Thank you very much. But yeah, much. we'll sort that we'll yeah. sort that game off at, up at Woven as well. That'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. And Charlie, if you have help, t- help us out with the podcast as well, if you any any of the the the, the women on the tour that would, would be interested yeah. in doing a podcast with us. Just yeah, no worries. Two, two good lads, and we'll um. If yeah. You want, if you want to come, as long as long as you think that we're two good lads, like you know, you yeah. might have no worries. Yeah, no, I will. I'll, I'll have a word with a couple of the girls, and I'll put them on to you, and I'll share it on my story when you do like this podcast and that. Perfect. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Coming up for like a couple of weeks, we'll share like a little picture of this yeah. story, we've had you on it or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, no worries. That's fine. And like, I was saying about my goals before about beating you over, but I can't wait to make that goal. <laughs> no, that'll be fun. <laughs> Shut a hole. <laughs> no, but look, again, it's going to be really insightful for anybody listening. It's amazing career. Yeah. We wish you the best of luck for this year and, and the years to come. And um, again, thanks for taking the time to speak to us. And no worries, thank you. Know, you've been touching we'll me with that get, gaming. We'll have to get you on when you win your first major. Your first interview has to be with the yeah. boys. Yeah, deal. That sounds a plan. I'll do that. <laughs> All right then, thank Charlie. You. Take care. All right. See you later. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank you.